finish that. Three excuses in Luke 9, 51 is where he's headed to Jerusalem. Luke 9, 57 through 62 is the three excuses. Turn me down just a little bit, Jazz. Three excuses. Three excuses. Any excuse anybody has for not being totally committed, Jesus exposed those in that little short pericope. And we went over each one. We went over each one. The first one blurted out, Lord, I'll follow you wherever you go. Jesus said, foxes have holes, the birds have nests, but the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. He didn't want to leave prosperity. He didn't want to leave his home. That was just taught. The second one, Jesus initiates an invitation. Y'all remember that? And he says to him, follow me. And he says, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. Jesus responds, let the dead bury the dead. Procrastination. Using family and procrastination. I am, but I got to stop it. Stop it. Sell out to the Lord. And then the third one, Jesus says, follow me. And he says, Lord, I will follow you. But first, let me go back and say goodbye to my family and my friends. And Jesus said, no one who puts his hand to the plow and do what? Look back. And looking back is really letting go. So if you're not totally committed, you can fall under one of those three categories, whatever your little excuse is. And I say that in love. It falls either your materialism, procrastination, or looking back and not letting go, whatever you are. And I pray that you are challenged and you rise up and understand what it means and how the body of Christ can be a perpetual force in this community. We're totally committed Christians. And here it is. Hey, listen to me now. The vast majority of you probably are challenged to the point where you say, I ain't sold out. Well, you don't need to go to sleep today. Because I got good news for you. It may have been painful for the last three weeks. But today I got good news for you. <laughs> After next week when we do safety, and today I'm going to do the parables directly of Jesus rebuking religious leaders. There's three parables. They're linked together. The two sons, we'll do that today. The parable of the tenants and the wedding banquet. All of them are directed at religious leaders. Y'all hear me? Why? Why? They question Jesus, listen to me now, because they did not want to relinquish authority. So as we start this series, Totally Committed is about relinquishing control of your life, relinquishing authority. Power is not given, it's taken. And Jesus has no problem taking it from you. Ask me how I know. <laughs> he will take it. So with this being understood, let's continue this series on totally committed. Are you ready to give up authority in your life? Because if you're not totally committed, it's one of these things. It's an excuse. And ultimately, you are questioning Christ's authority. Now watch this. Matthew 21, 28. 
Jesus asked a question. But before we get into the question what Jesus asked, you got to understand, and we'll deal with it in Bible study. Make sure you write your notes. He had cleaned the, cleansed the temple. They came in here, cleansed the temple. They didn't like that. He's, he, he's the authority. He's cleansing the temple. My house is a house of prayer. You made it a den of thieves. He's cleansed the temple. So now the religious leaders, remember we talked about disciple, are questioning Jesus. By what authority? Now, now wait a minute. In other words, who do you think you are? Y'all young. It used to be a song, who do you think you are, Mr. Big Stuff? Y'all remember that? I ain't always been saved. I ain't always been saved. All right. So they really questioning him, saying, now, now you coming in here, we got things just like we want them. And you come in here, and you change and stuff, just like he does to our lives. And you, if you're not careful, you just like this religious person, you saying, let me, hold up, Christ. I don't got to live at this standard of what you, who do you think you are? Who, who do you think? You got to re- understand, and I, can, I cannot emphasize this enough. He is not talking to pagans. He's talking to church folk. Not, not Macedonians. <laughs> He's talking to church folk who questions, who dare question Jesus' authority. You may say, I ain't that quick. Okay. When you are not totally committed, what you're doing is you're questioning his authority. By what authority do you come into my life and you got the audacity to tell me what to do with my money, how to live my life, what to do with my body, how I should live, what I should forgive? How dare you say that? By what authority do you have? And Jesus would ask you the same question. He's going to ask them. Let's take the plane off. Let's get this plane off the ground. Verse 28. Jesus' response. I love this. I love this one. He, 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 he don't answer their questions. You know, he, he don't answer their questions. Look what he said. He, he didn't answer their questions. He asked them a question. Uh, I can see him now. Let me, let, me, let, me, let me reconstruct this text. Let me reconstruct this text. They say, now, uh, you done ran the temple out. Uh, we got a question. They try to trick him about John the Baptist, and if he's with God, he's this. And they try to trick him and ask him a question about what if they question his authority. And he says, What do you think? What, 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 what do you think? Oh, and by the way, by the way, good Christian people, God does not have to answer your question. I don't care how mad you get. And, well, God, you got to answer me. He ain't got to answer you nothing. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world. Matter of fact, if he talks to you, you ought to be glad. And you shaking your finger at God saying, now I need some answers. Why this happened? I'm down here doing this. Why are you doing this? God says, listen, what do you think? Let me, let me uh, uh, mama, mother, we're not, uh, uh, I'm regressing. I'm getting a little angry up here. Questioning God. Let me stop. Let me park right here just for a second. Let me park right here. You wouldn't dare question your mama or your daddy. Why are you questioning? Ruby Jean Brooks raised me. And she said, boy, go. I didn't dare say why. I looked at her and said, where? Where are we going? So Jesus said, real quick, he says, what do you think? He says, there a man who had two sons. He had two sons. And he went to the first, and he said, son, go and work today where? In the vineyard. Now watch this. He asking them the same questions about the authority. A man had two sons. He says, go work in the vineyard. The vineyard, watch this, the vineyard. The vineyard represents, in this text, following God. Yes, yes, yes. Doing what God says totally. Watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. Sometimes as Christians, we make this this mistake. Maybe you haven't made this mistake. Sometimes we make this mistake. We make this mistake is that we say, I'm working for the Lord. 
and you in the church when you say it. But the Bible tells us that the earth is the Lord's, the fullness thereof, the world, and they that dwell therein, which means that everything you do and everywhere you are, you are working for the Lord. Don't think just because you in the church ushering, you driving the van, or do, that is the work of the Lord. But the main verb is to go make disciples. Your job is the vineyard. The, your neighborhood is the vineyard. Your business is the vineyard. Everywhere you go, God is assigning you to go somewhere. Oh, I know I'm right about it. You have to open up your paradigm. You have to open up your paradigm to see I'm working for the Lord. And we say this all the time. You might get mad at me, but listen to me. I'm telling you the truth. I just hate this job. Why? Colossians 3.23. Whatever you do, you do it for the Lord. You should be representing God where he planted you. Stop being mean and evil and lazy and coming to work. Then you're going to invite me to church. I ain't going to your church. You lazy. You don't even do no work. You complain all day. You're on your phone all day. You don't even do a decent job. You gossip all the time. You represent Christ wherever you are. Even if you sweep streets, sweep the streets so that God can get the glory. You're a school teacher. Do it to God's glory. You're a business owner. You're a bus driver. You're a plumber. You're a dentist. You're a doctor. Come down on some of them bills. Come down a little bit. Represent Jesus. That mercy. Listen. Whatever you do, you do to the glory of God. And God is calling every last one of us. Go in the vineyard. Go. Go and represent me. Go and do the work. Now watch this. Notice this. I got to make this point. Notice that the master orders. Watch this. Both sons. And here's the thing. You know, I like the languages. He ordered both of them to go into the vineyard to work. The text really implies today. Today. He went to him, Wanda Bird, and says, hey, go work today. Love Ruby Jean Brooks to death. I love her to death, but she taught me so much. I'd be in the room doing what I have to do, playing my little Nintendo and the electronic football game. Mm. We didn't have all that stuff. We didn't, mm. Football cards, psh, rock, I mean, super toe, psh, hit the head, poop. And she would say, John Leslie! Yeah, mama. She said, come here, boy. Right now. She from North Carolina. Right now. I had to stop everything I was doing right now. And I had to go do what she said right now. And God is calling you to stop what you're doing right now. He said, go and work today. I got to unpack this. I'm going to take my time today. Listen, you're being called to work. He told the religious folk. He said, what you think? I've ordered you to do something right now. Some of you are talking about, I need to get my life together. He said, mm, go work right now. Now look at verse 29. Look at verse 29. You're in the vineyard. And the first son, and some of us are the first son. I ain't going to ask you to say which one you are. But the first one says, um, I will not. That's why you got to appreciate the Greek language. You got to understand the language. I know y'all hate when I do this, but you got to understand the languages. He did not politely say, Daddy, Dad, come on, Dad, I got a date tonight. I would do it, but that, uh, it's just not a good time. That's not the will not. His will not in the Greek language was that of defiance. It's called emphatic language. It's defiant language. Watch me now. He said emphatically, no, I ain't going. I will not. No, I ain't going. Heck no. If he's one of these kids today, he probably cussed. Oh, that's just him. You lost your mind. Mm. Pastor Brooks and Jay, I knocked him out. I knocked him out, boy. I knocked him out. <laughs> Cuss me out. But this kid was, so, this, this son was so defiant. 
I mean, I mean, he, he was so defiant. He says, I will not go. Defiant. Defiant. He was straight to the point. He was clear. It ain't going to happen. It ain't going to happen. But the text says, but later, but later, but later, I looked and did some research. It don't tell how much longer, but later. And some of y'all, before you start shouting, you that first son. God has called you to do something, and you're at your defiance of your life. You are telling God emphatically, no, I like the way I'm living. I will not do it. And I ain't talking about church. I'm talking about your whole life. God has called you to holiness. God has called you to righteousness. God has told you to work in the vineyard. And you, by your life, even though it ain't verbally, with your actions, you have defied God. And some of y'all, just like me, was raised in the church and couldn't wait till we got 18. And we got 18, I said, I ain't going to nobody's church. She can't make me go because I ain't underneath her roof. I don't care nothing about no 12 o'clock. I'm going to watch the kickoff at 12 o'clock with Greg Gumbel every Sunday. You done make me miss it for 18 years. It's a new day now. It's a new day. It's a new day. It's a new day. I will not do it. You are living in defiance. But later, maybe you was in the hospital sick. Maybe your latest when you got pregnant and wasn't married. <laughs> Come on, talk to me, somebody. Maybe you was in jail. <laughs> but later, 10 kids later, talk to me, somebody. Some heartbreak later. Come on, later. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Now you're addicted to pornography. Later. He didn't say what it was, but later he changed his mind. And I don't want to get into your business this morning, but how many of y'all can identify with this first son? You said, God, I ain't doing nothing that you say do, but you got out there in life and you walk right past this vineyard and you live in your life. You got your little managerial job. You got everything happen. And then the economy crashed. And now you got that little three car garage. Mm-hmm. You got that mortgage note. Uh huh. You got everything on. And then they call you to the office and say, we're going to give you a severance package later. Living your life just any kind of way. And later, watch this. And this is what real, this is what I think this text is just so beautiful right here. He changed his mind. Most translations said he repented. Most translations said he repented. And what? Went. So now I started digging. What you mean he repented? He repented. What do you mean he Repented. Now, now, most of us think repent is when we are salvation. This was not a salvific repent. Mm-mm. It's a Greek term. Repent. He changed his mind, which means by his own thinking. Because of circumstances, he felt bad and had an emotional response he regretted disrespecting the father but watch this watch this this is the same repentance that you will find in Matthew 21 27 3 when Judas had sold the 30 pieces of silver and it says that same Greek word he repented Judas didn't get saved Judas said darn it my plan didn't work I know we ain't shout now, so let's not make him save just because he changed his mind. And it can't be salvific, because salvific would mean that he now is accepted Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior. And watch this, you can't repent for yourself. Ain't nothing in you going to make you repent. 
You can only be drawn by the Holy Spirit. You can't repent of yourself. You can feel sorry. You can have tears. Judas had tears, but he killed himself. So this first son, he felt bad about it. He didn't get saved. He didn't get saved. He didn't get saved. He didn't get saved. He felt bad about it. And he said, maybe I should start doing what God, my father, has told me to do. And he says, I'm going to start doing the work of God. And here is the shouting material. A lot of us, you ain't got to say amen. We are repentive in the way that we feel sorry when life hits us, but we ain't saved. We come to church and do the work. And I'm here to tell you, the church is full of a whole lot of people who have repented. In the the Greek term, mathanaeoto, okay? Mathanaeoto, that means to feel sorry for. And And he regretted. So in his mind, he says, you know what? I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna do what the Father told me to do. So he went back into the vineyard, Miguel, and he started working. But he wasn't saved. But he was working. And I'm here to tell you, and you ain't gonna like this, a church is filled with a whole lot of people who is doing a whole lot of work, but you ain't saved. You just feel sorry for what you've done. But wait a minute, I told you some good news today. Here's some good news today. I told you, I ain't going to leave you out there today. The good news is that when he started doing the work, he got saved. And what I'm saying is that we can't make the church full of a whole lot of perfect people. That's why you come in here. Don't be talking about what she doing. She working her way back. She don't understand who Jesus Christ is. She understands she's messed up on the inside. He messed up what he's done on the inside. But we don't want them in the church because we say, look at him. Ain't that the one who said they didn't do X, Y, Z? Listen to me, baby. Forget them. Come on and start doing what the Lord has told you to do. And when you're doing what the Lord tells you to do, you're going to be around the preacher preaching. You're going to be around the song talking about he keep on working, miracle worker, promise keeper light in the dark you're going to say what y'all talking about I've heard that and before you know it the Holy Spirit is going to draw you and if it draws you then you're going to say I'll say yes Lord yes and we got to let people in the church work their way back to the Lord. Stop being so angry. Stop being so holy that folk in the church have to be perfect. I'm glad that when I came back, I didn't have it all together, but I knew I needed my Savior. I know I needed God, and I just started going back. And he says, I will draw you. I will draw you with my loving kindness. And people who know what I'm talking about, we shouting, because when we came to the church, you didn't want us in here. You looked at us crazy. You looked at us because of our reputation. You looked at us because the skirts was too short. You looked at us because we wouldn't, we had just got out of jail. You looked at us because we weren't no good. But you know what? I ain't here for you. And I'm glad God looks beyond what I've done. And he says, okay, now that you change your mind, it is the Holy Spirit that will draw you to salvation. Oh, I wish we could get that. I love you to death, but don't you believe everybody here saved? But that's okay. You playing with fire. Come up in here. Come on, come on up in here. Pastor, you going to let them come up in here just any kind of way? I show him. Where they at? Where, where they at? Where they at? Where they at? Where they at? Get them, Holy Spirit. Get them, Holy Spirit. If thou shalt confess with the mouth the Lord Jesus. Bam! And believe it, you keep coming. It's going to get I wish I had some witnesses here. Some of y'all. So this first son represented at that day the prostitutes and the harlots. And those for us who are jacked up. After he went, after he regretted it, and we'll deal with that. Listen to me, and I'm going to move on. That repent, you can't. There's nothing in you that's make you going to repent. That's the job of the Holy Spirit. So he repented. He felt bad. 
He went back and he did the work. Wow. Now look. Notice this. Matthew 21.30. Matthew 21.30. Father went to the other son. Said the same thing. And he answered. Now, now look at the difference. His language was, I will, sir. That word translated in the Greek is kyrios, which means Lord. Lord with a capital L, which means he is now verbally calling him Lord. And I'm not trying to offend anybody, but he fervently calling him Lord, way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. That's what your mouth is saying. He is Lord. He is Lord. He has risen from the dead and he is Lord. That's my song. That's what your mouth is saying. I know you're going to get offended. Every time the church opens, you there. You on every committee. Stop, bro, stop. You ain't come to Bible study. <laughs> this first son said all the right things. This represented the Jews. The Pharisees, the priests, the churchgoer. <sighs> but look at his text. His mouth said it, but what? He what? Did not go. Wow. Mm, mm, mm. He believed that he's Lord, but he wasn't totally committed. In too many churches now today, and I love you, we border. We border. We border. What do you mean we border? This is what some churches do today to have a whole lot of attendance so they can say they got thousands of people. They'll let people believe without doing and I'm here to tell you if you are a true believer there's no separation from believing and doing you ain't gonna do unless you believe and if you believe you ain't gonna do then something's wrong Too many churches fostered this environment that I'm glad that you're here, so therefore I am not going to challenge you. I'm just glad that you're paying your tithes. I'm glad that you're showing up. I'm glad that you're singing in the choir. I'm glad that you're teaching Sunday school. I'm glad that you're doing X, Y, Z. I'm glad that you're doing this. I'm fixing to get fired. I'm glad that you're doing all of this. I'm glad that you're doing all Let's just come and we just praise God. Ain't that church just off the cliff? Yeah, but there's nobody doing. Ain't nobody in the vineyard. Ain't nobody living the life of Christ outside of this building. <laughs> Total commitment. And again, let me, let me stress this. I am not preaching perfection. How can somebody jacked up like me preach perfection? I don't believe God is calling us to be perfect. People say, the text says, be perfect for I am perfect. Again, you got to understand the language. He is perfect. He says, I am who I am, the total being who I am. You be totally what you are and what you are capable of being. You can't be perfect without God. And you say, yes, I can. I say, I got the Holy Spirit in you. The fact that you got the Holy Spirit in me tells me you ain't perfect. Because if you got the Holy Spirit to lead and guide you, that means you're prone to make mistakes. Can I tell a witness? 
Romans 7, that which I find myself doing, I don't want to do. And that what I want to do, I find myself not doing. It is sin that lives in me. That's why God gives us the Holy Spirit as the paraclete to comfort us, to lead us, and to guide us. So you are not perfect. So I am not preaching perfection. I mean commitment. I mean trying your best. Doing the best you can. Doing the best you can. Doing the work. What would the church be like if everybody was committed? Totally committed. But the first son was all taught. All taught. I knew he'd get no amens today. All taught. But said the right things. And Jesus asked them in verse 31. Next text. Look what he says in the next text. Which of the two did what the father wanted? What son are you? They answered. The first one. first one and Jesus said truly I tell you tax collectors prostitutes the one that you look down on will enter the kingdom and again I hate to do this the NIV says ahead of you but the actual translation in the Greek translation said the, the, the text says instead of you it's not ahead of you because works won't get you to heaven the translation in the Greek is instead of you. Oh, you got to be the dumbest person ever. You spending your whole life faking. You spending your whole life going through the motions. That's got to be miserable. I don't want that for you. I don't want that for you. Depart from me. I never knew you. I never knew you. I never knew you. I never knew you. Why are you coming in here and you're not going to commit? Why? 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 Wow. But here's the good news. If you son number two, you should got time. Ask me how I know. That's me, I know. Because I've been son number one and son number two. Don't you let this title fool you. Don't you let this title fool you. I know what it's like to be in rebellion. I know what it's like to come to church and having people look at you. I know what it's like when all seven of us came to church with no father. When people made you look down on them because what they said about your mother. I know what it's like to live a life of rebellion. Nothing I'm proud of. But yet come to church I'm blessed and I'm highly favored. But yet in my life it was tore up. I know what it's like. I know what it's like. But here's the good news of the gospel. Here's the good news. Whosoever. And I'm glad that the whosoever includes the prostitute the backslider, the liar, the gambler, the adulterer, the homosexual, the lesbian, whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I ain't what I should be, but I'm glad I'm not what I used to be. Please be patient with me. God is not through with me yet. And I'm working in the vineyard. And I'm doing.
doing what the master said. Ask for me in my house. We will serve the true God. We're not perfect, but we're committed. And if you ain't there, God gives you another chance. God gives you another chance. You can come in here faking, but you can leave committed. The question is, that's it. You still got time. Here I am. Here I stand. Lord, my life is in your hand. I'm tired of faking. I'm tired of not being totally committed. Lord, I'm longing to see your desire fulfilled in me. I give myself away. Somebody here today. If you're the number one son, And you're rebelling, you just I'm coming, you just trying to make your way back. Keep coming. Keep doing the work. It's the job of the Holy Spirit to save you. You son number two, and you came in here, no, you're not committed. You can say, wait a minute. Here I am. 